every Little League baseball game and, uh, and a, a big part of his life at that time. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, they got the along guys. beautifully the for about players. the first six months after the divorce. Because uh, Don was taking Kurt to ball games and fishing. Fly. Stuff that way, yeah. camping and stuff, and uh, they got along beautifully. But uh, after he got married, all that stopped. And I guess Kirk just didn't, I guess he just wanted to be the centerpiece. And he wasn't anymore. His father eventually met this woman and, and married her, and she had three children of her own. And uh, Kurt suddenly had stepbrothers and sisters in his house, and uh, that created a great difficulty for him. Um, he was used to being the center of attention in this family throughout his whole life. He had really been the center of attention. Even when his sister was born, it was still the Kurt show. And uh, having a stepmother and uh, stepbrothers and sisters, uh, he forever felt uh, alienated and isolated, I think, from that point on. His stepmother, uh, Kurt, wrote some nasty things about her and said some nasty things about her. Having met her and talked to her early childhood relationship oh, gets doctored by things that happened later. Being split up was something that was very difficult for him to appreciate My emotionally. Tripod. Uh, many kids at that age begin, I think, to understand that, okay, mom and dad don't get along. My trip. sense with Kurt was that it, it, it was a personal insult to him, the idea of not having his family together. He was separated from his sister, who he loved. Uh, those things were very, very difficult for him. Uh, initially spent some time with his mother and then moved in with his father into a trailer in Montesano. Now, then things sort of improved. Kurt loved being with his dad. They had a very close relationship. I think at times that relationship gets doctored by things that happened later. Okay. But during his early childhood, I think his father was yeah, tremendously important to him. And yeah. they were very close. He was, you know, he was hard on Kurt to a point, but I think it was out of love. You know, that's why he was hard on him. And, and it was obvious. But, you know, for someone to, I'm sure him and, his father's problems later on, you know, were about a lot of different better, things. But his dad was very better, supportive when he was growing up, and you could tell he wanted to be a part of his life. He was at every Little League baseball game and uh, and a, a big part of his life at that hey, time. Uh, they got along beautifully for about almost, the first I almost forgot six my months that after the You know what divorce. I'm talking about. Because uh, Don was taking Kurt to ball games and fishing and sort of been with his father into a trailer in Montesano. Now, then things sort of improved. Kurt loved being with his dad. They had a very close relationship. I think at times that relationship gets doctored by things that happened later, but during his early childhood, I think his father was tremendously important to him, and they were very close. He was, you know, he was hard on Kurt to a point, but I think it was out of love. You know, that's why he was hard on him. And, and it was obvious, but, you know, for someone to, I'm sure him and his father's problems later on, you know, were about a lot of different things. But his dad was very supportive when he was growing up, and you could tell he wanted to be a part of his life. He was at every Little League baseball game and, uh, and a, a big part of his life at that time. Anyway, uh, they got along beautifully for about the first six months after the divorce. Because uh, he, Don was taking Kurt to ball games and fishing and stuff that way, camping and stuff, and uh, oh, they got all in. Uh, be a part of his life. He was at every little league baseball game and uh, and a, a big part of his life at that time. Anyway, uh, they got along beautifully for about the first six months after the divorce because uh, he Don was taking Kurt to ball games and fishing and stuff that way camping and stuff and uh, they got along beautifully but uh, after he got married all that stopped and I guess Kurt just didn't I guess he just wanted to be the centerpiece and he wasn't anymore
his father eventually met this woman and, and married her, and she had three children of her own. And uh, Kurt suddenly had step brothers and sisters in his house, and uh, that created a great difficulty for him. Um, he was used to being the center of attention in his family throughout his whole life. He had really been the center of attention. Even when his sister was born, it was still the Kurt show. And uh, having a stepmother and uh, stepbrothers and sisters, uh, he forever <coughs> felt uh, alienated and isolated, I think, from that point on. His stepmother, uh, Kurt, wrote some nasty things about her and after a great oh, difficulty I could take for him. Now. Um, he was used to being the center of attention in his family throughout his whole life. He had really been the center of attention. Even when his sister was born, it was still the Kurt show. And uh, having a stepmother and uh, stepbrothers and sisters, uh, he forever felt uh, alienated and isolated, I think, from that point on. His stepmother, uh, Kurt, wrote some nasty things about her and said some nasty things about her. Having met her and talked to her extensively, my sense was that he demonized her. Um, she says that she made every attempt to really love him. What's this guy's problem, bro? That's, he don't he even know her like her, dude. Mom. And, uh, like, I think there bro. are a lot of relationships between Seems step like you parents made and kids that are home, difficult. Man. And this one he was always difficult story. for Why are you, you know, I think he was so really? bitter about his parents being divorced that he never really, uh, his, his stepmom never really had a chance from the start, I don't think. Because she seemed like a pretty nice lady to me. I always liked her. But, you know, you, it was hard enough on him where he just, you know, you could tell it was brutal. He, that made him very unhappy. But there were times when uh, he thought that he was treated unfair, you know, like his step siblings were um, definitely favored in some things. He, he thought that that was going on. And, um, you know, it's hard to say because when I stayed with them in that house, it it seemed to me like everything was pretty good, you know, but I didn't have to live there. His father just didn't, uh, I wouldn't say take his side, but give him any benefit of the doubt. And uh, he went with the, the stepchildren, which was Jay and Mindy. Uh, but uh, he he was off and grounded a lot and uh, basically paid no attention to. Him. And then that's when he started uh, doing his own thing. Not become I wouldn't say he's a loner because he has friends, but he preferred being alone. Having moved in with his new family on Fleet Street, Montesano, a small logging town about ten miles from Aberdeen. Kurt attended Montesano High School, where he first met Darren Nethery. That was 1975. I was nine. And when I first met Kurt at um, our elementary school in Montesano, and uh, he was a, a very shy kid. Uh, we got to know each other basically on the playground, uh, playing sports and things like that. So I grew up on 3rd Street, and he moved in uh, on Fleet Street in Montesano there. Uh, probably around 3rd third, third or 4th grade, I think 3rd grade. Uh, we were around seven, 7 years old, and uh, I used to hang around and go over to his house quite a bit. And uh, he would live up, uh, he lived upstairs in, uh, I think his address was 413 or something like that. But he lived in, uh, in the top room up there. Kurt was kind of a free spirit, you know, he was, um, his kindness was always there, and, um, you know, he could, he could be, you know, pretty nasty at times, you know, when he wanted to be, and a lot of that was, you know, his sense of humor. We went to Seattle to watch the Mariners play. We got, it was Little League night, and uh, all the, all the all kids the went up there, and oh we had a good time, stuff like that. We, me and Kurt climbed the when it was before batting practice, we climbed down behind a fence and go down there. It's like 30 or 40 balls down there. And we freaking, uh, in his house, because she seemed like a pretty happy, treated unfair, you know, like his step, 
siblings were um, definitely favored in some things, you know. They just didn't, uh, I wouldn't say take his side, but give him any benefit of the doubt. And uh, he went with the, the stepchildren, which was Jay and Mindy. Uh, but uh, he he was off and grounded a lot and uh, basically paid no attention to him. And then that's when he started uh, doing his own thing. Not become, I wouldn't say he's a loner because he has friends, but he preferred being alone. Having moved in with his new family on Fleet Street, Montesano, a small logging town about 10 miles from Aberdeen, Kurt attended Montesano High School, where he first met Darren Nethery. That was 1975. I was nine. And when I first met Kurt at um, our elementary school in Montesano, and uh, he was a, a very shy kid. Uh, we got to know each other basically on the playground, uh, playing sports, things. I think third grade, lived, I mean, he lived at, uh, in the top. Is that, and uh, he would live up, uh, he lived upstairs, and uh, I think his address was 413 or something like that, but he lived at, uh, in the top room up there. Kurt was kind of a free spirit, you know, he was, um, his kindness was always there and um you know he could he could be you know pretty nasty at times just you know when he wanted to be and a lot of that was you know his sense of humor we went to seattle to watch the mariners play we got it was little league night and uh, all the all the kids went up there and we had a good time stuff like that we me and kurt climbed the when it was before batting practice so we climbed down behind a fence and go down there it's like 30 or 40 balls down there and we freaking uh have them all this stuff you know and then he would uh he threw them at the players <laughs> when we were at the police and then on little league night i'm like eight years old and the usher comes up and says hey we're gonna have to throw you out you know uh, as far as school work goes and kurt being academic you know there's no question the guy was smart uh he was very intelligent but he didn't he didn't have a lot of drive to do well in school, you know. Oh. He he may Rapple might get a C clothes. or a D in English class, but he get an A in art. His artwork was just um, put my clothes in the dryer. Guys. That's all he could do, you know. Um, back then, uh, he didn't like sports, like I said, and he would go home and draw. Just go to his room and draw, and uh, later, if uh, he would. Uh, 